The purpose of this video is to introduce the viewer to the Corex autologous bone harvesting instrument, which comes in a single patient use disposable form. It uh, normally would have a Tyvek peel pack that would cover the uh, receptacle in which the device is housed. After the peel pack has been removed, the device is delivered from the sterile container, and in this sample unit, we have a labeling, but obviously in the surgical units there would not be such labeling. Uh, you can see on the proximal handle the designation for rotation of the upper handle relative to the lower handle, clockwise to close or secure, and counterclockwise to open for the introduction of the device for harvesting. You do not want to rotate the upper relative to the lower handle while you have the uh, trocar tip present on the device. The trocar tip has a sharp tip. This protective vinyl cap should be kept on the operative field for use if you should need to replace the trocar tip. You can see that the trocar tip has sharp uh, projecting uh, flutes which will cut through the cortical bone and we want to start with the device in the green or open position whenever the trocar tip is in place or in position. We've used this uh, plastic covered polyurethane foam block as a simulator for uh, cortical bone and cancellous bone. We can start the penetration by placing the device on the cortical surface after incising the skin. Uh, the procedure can be performed percutaneously or through a very small open uh, incision. Uh, when done percutaneously, no retractors are needed and pre-op infiltration with uh, marking with epinephrine is uh, recommended. The trocar tip is placed on the surface and then with a somewhat exaggerated motion and oscillating clockwise and counterclockwise with light but sufficient pressure to allow advancing of the trocar tip into the cortical bone. One starts to generate a hole by peeling, if you will, the cortical surface. This light pressure with exaggerated oscillation clockwise and counterclockwise produces the desired cutting effect that the flutes provide in removing the cortical bone. When you get down to the final position where the shoulder, this stopping feature, there's a shoulder on the um, trocar tip, will prevent you from going deeper with moderate but effective pressure. At this point, one can, depending upon the thickness of the cortex, proceed to harvesting the bone in the thicker cortical bone, a slight oscillation with wobbling in a rotatory manner will enlarge the hole slightly to increase the hole size so that insertion of the tree fire device is easier. Fragments of cortical bone can be collected if desired, but if you're simply interested in harvesting cancellous bone, you would cap the trocar tip and then by simply pushing this removal tool forward, the trocar tip comes off easily. You want to save that in the operative field in case you need to use it again. This can be removed or it can be retained proximally. I'm going to remove it for visualization purposes. You can see that there's graduated markings on the tree find section. The bottom of the second hole or fenestration is at the five centimeter depth. We're going to use that in this particular demonstration as a limit for the amount that we're going to penetrate the tree fine uh, deep to the subcortical bone. Similar to the uh, use of the tree fine, oscillating back and forth allows the castellated distal surface, which has these small teeth to microfracture the cancellous bone. So we're going to again use that oscillating motion with light but adequate pressure to advance the device deep to the subcortical surface. If 
cortex is encountered during the advancing, you will feel a discrete uh, increase in resistance, and that should prompt you to redirect the tree fine or stop your harvest. At this point, we're at the 5 centimeter depth. You can see that the black and the green line are lined up for this initial insertion position. And we're now going to rotate the black upper handle line to the red lower handle line, which will secure the cancellous bone. This is done with a forceful grasping and rotation, and it's in effect like you're wringing out a towel. You have to use that kind of gripping force to get the black line lined up with the red, and there is a distinct locking click that you will feel and sometimes hear as well. Now on withdrawal, I prefer to rotate it as I'm withdrawing in a clockwise manner. It's not essential, but I think it's a good idea as it will just reinforce, if you will, the locking as opposed to rotating it counterclockwise while withdrawing. At this point, you have your cortical cancellous bone uh, captured within the tree fine, and we need to free it from the locked position. We will then turn the upper handle from the red to the green line, lining up the black on the green. That corresponds with the open position, and we are ready to now use the sterile tamp to deliver our first harvested cancellous segment. So with the device, again, in the black line of the upper handle, lined up with the green line of the lower handle, which is the introduction position, we now can place it again through the cortical defect on a different angle. Our first angle was this way. Now we're going to angle on a different, in a different axis. Again, oscillating back and forth with light but sufficient pressure to advance the instrument. And in this manner, we can harvest through a small incision quite a bit of bone.